I Rock Radio, the world the headquarters of rock. It is Mike Caroli with my very special guest, Jim Koplick of Live Nation. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's hard to believe that we are celebrating the 25th season of what was the Meadows Music Theater and is now the Xfinity Theater in Hartford. Congratulations, by the thank way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been quite a journey. Mm -hmm. Lots of shows. So we'll get into some of the bands that have played there over the years, but I want to go way back to the very beginning. What was the first thought and idea to building an amphitheater? Uh, I visited an amphitheater um, out in Denver, Red Rocks, and I thought it was a beautiful setting. And I also liked the idea that the owner of the amphitheater kept all the money on the parking and kept all the money on the food and beverage that when I brought a show into an arena, they kept all the money. And I kept saying to myself, then, why, if I'm bringing the music in, should they keep the money? I paid them rent, too, the arena. Mm -hmm. So I'd pay them rent, I'd give them food and beverage money, and I'd give them par the park, they'd make the parking that they had, whatever parking they had. And I thought it was crazy. I said, I want one of those. <laughs> and that's truly, and amphitheaters were hot, and they were being built in a number of other markets. And that gave me the idea. It was a strictly business decision. From first idea to actually opening the doors, how much time had passed? Oh, it was a good five to six years. I hired a couple of different real estate agents to look through the state because you had to find 50 to 60 acres in general between all the parking and the venue itself. And in Connecticut, that's not easy. What were uh, some of the other locations? Well, we had a site in Willington, Connecticut, right off 84. It, there's a truck stop there right now. Uh, it's, I think it's exit 68, but I'm not sure. Uh, and we went in front of the town uh, and asked for permission and they turned us down because they didn't want any loud music. I hid, I did not participate in it because we didn't want to give anybody the idea that it was going to be a rock and roll venue even though it was going to be a rock and roll venue. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I didn't even go to the hearing and they turned us down. Now they got a truck stop. <laughs> you know, and what could they have? Really? They could have had a big amphitheater there for 25 years. It would have been unbelievable for them. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, we met with Governor Weicker, and the governor suggested Bridgeport. Um, and at that time, it was 1993, 1994, um, the, idea, I, the idea of Bridgeport didn't really appeal to me. Uh, we had done uh, some shows in the Bridgeport High Life Fronton, and um, I didn't think the audience wanted to go to Bridgeport that much. So I said, no, I said, um, I don't want to do Bridgeport. Could you have another site? And I remember the governor, who was a very tall person, standing up and looking at me and goes, then what the fuck am I going to do with Bridgeport? <laughs> I said, that's not my problem. I was going to say, not your problem. <laughs> I said, give me another place. And he wanted to go into, a, into a, an urban market. So uh, he then suggested Hartford. So he suggested a place in the South Meadows where the, uh, the food market is. They've, and so we went to the South Meadows. We loved the site. It was right near the airport. We loved the site. But we couldn't, there were leases that these food vendors had that were too long for us to wait for. So then we went back to the governor and we said, okay, that doesn't work. And he suggested in the North Meadows, where the amphitheater is right now, uh, that was big open grass. And uh, we, because of the High Life Fronton that was north, we made a parking deal with them. We had enough parking with the High Life Fronton. So between the High Life Fronton, our parking, we had enough parking for the amphitheater and we decided to build up there. Why did you decide on the name the Meadows Music Theater? I, obviously the location, but there must have been other names thrown around at the time. How did that name become the winning name? It's funny. Uh, we, I wanted to name it the Meadows um, the whole time for two reasons. It's in the North Meadows, but also because when I think of an outdoor lawn, I think of Meadows. It's a mm -hmm. pretty slope. It's not a hill. Meadows are slopey, and I thought it would give a nice image to it. And uh, my partners wanted to name it the Four Seasons because it was an indoor-outdoor amphitheater. And at the time, it was going to be the only indoor-outdoor amphitheater um, built. Philly ended up building one also. Uh, so they wanted the Four Seasons. And I go, well, that's either a hotel or a singing group from the 60s. I said, that <laughs> comes to my mind, not, not, not a, a concert venue. Mm -hmm. So they ended up spending $10,000 on a survey surveying people what they thought the best name was. <laughs> and the Meadows came in third. And Four Seasons actually came in number one. So I refused to, I, I held my ground. I said, I am not naming it the Four Seasons. It's just ridiculous. They finally gave up and said, okay, name it the Meadows, even though you're wrong. It's the wrong name. <laughs> You'll see it won't work. And I said, but it's, it, to us in Connecticut, it works. Mm -hmm. We know the area, it's in the North Meadows. And they gave in. That only lasted three years. Right. Because then we sold the name. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people still refer to it as the Meadows because that's, that's what they 
knew it as in the beginning, and now it's the Xfinity Theater at the Meadows. I hear people list our listeners all the time will attach the current name with the old name. You know, right? And which is a real it. win for Xfinity because at least they're using their name. Right. In the old days, they would always say the Meadows, but the fact that it was only open, we're celebrating mm -hmm. 25 years, and only for three of the years they had this name Meadows. It is sort of remarkable that that's even in the vernacular anymore. Mm -hmm. Look, Xfinity has had it for seven years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Comcast before that had it for three years. Mm -hmm. I've been fortunate enough to be on that stage when the, it's full of equipment in production, and I've been on that stage when it's empty. It's an enormous stage. And under every name you've been on that stage, probably. Pretty, oh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what the theater was named, you were on the stage. I was, yeah. Right. So when you designed the building, because I would imagine you're, you were involved in everything. Yes. You were involved in the name, you are involved in the lawn, and the seating, and the staging. Tell us about the creation of the stage and what went into the thought process of that? Oh, that stage is a very uh, unique stage. Um, it's a stage that we can remove. Most amphitheaters have full stages that are made of concrete and not movable. But in 1993, Pink Floyd toured, and I wanted to make a venue that Pink Floyd could play, and they always brought their own stage. So I convinced my partners that we should have a stage that's removable. So you're right, the stage at Xfinity has a stage that's basically concrete on top, but underneath it, and you can pull it out with the concrete, is all scaffolding. Hmm. It's all scaffolding and wood. There really is very little concrete. It's all scaffolding and wood, but it holds the right amount of weight that any rock show could fit in there. And there have been times we've, been, we've needed to remove the stage. If somebody has trap doors in their show, or uh, Tina Turner had, we had to remove it. So at Rush, we had to remove it. There were a number of artists that we actually had to pull out the stage. And when the artists hear that we can pull out the stage, it guarantees a show at Xfinity. Yeah, so why limit yourself, right? So you went full on production so you can accommodate anybody. Never got Pink Floyd there. I got Roger Waters <laughs> Roger there, Waters. <laughs> but not Pink Floyd. <laughs> so July 9th, 1995, first show, Hootie and the Blowfish. Right. That was, was that kind of a soft opening? Yes. Leading up to the grand opening? Yes, we, we are smart business people. We wanted to only have 5,000 people there. There was this new band that came out called Hootie and the Blowfish. That's a stupid little name. How big could this band get, right? <laughs> Who knew, right? Right. And it ends up that uh, we put the tickets on sale, and oh my God, we sell over 15,000 tickets. <laughs> we never had run an amphitheater before. The place had never run before. We, were, we wanted only 5,000. It ended up going well, and, uh, and it worked out fine on July 9th. It really did. But the opening was really not on July 9th. That was the soft opening, as you right. put it. Right. The official opening was with Michael Bolton, the mm -hmm. next show. Was it important for you to have a Connecticut artist be the official opening of the venue? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that year, I mean, that whole season, you had Van Halen there and R.E.M. live in Queensryche. I mean... I had Radiohead there. Radiohead. opening act. For opening for Van Halen? No, Radiohead opened for R.E.M. Oh, that's right. Yeah, all right. So think about that. What, yeah, I know. What, you know, Radiohead went on to do, and they were opening up for R.E.M. That's, that's pretty cool. They haven't been back to Connecticut since. Mm-hmm. It's like I did something wrong. I don't think I did. But yeah, what, what did you, you do? come back. <laughs> uh, which artist over the 25 years has played that venue more than others? Dave Matthews holds the record. It's 40 times uh, in 25 years. Think about that. 40 times in 25 years he's played there. Mm -hmm. um, he far and away is in first place. The Allman Brothers Band and Toby Keith are tied for second place. Really? Uh -huh. Yes. But so, they're, they're at 15 years. So it shows you how 40 <laughs> years compares to 15 years. Mm -hmm. Still impressive. I mean, for all of them, as a matter of fact. But we could talk about a million different shows, and everybody has their favorites that they went to. I just went through and selected some of my favorites and the, what I think the IROC audience and the CCC audience would target as their favorite. One, I know you're going to remember it immediately, is Rage Against the Machine. August 17th of 97? 97. Yeah. It was 97. That was quite a day for a number of reasons. Rage Against the Machine was at their peak. Great live band, but man, people really <laughs> went kind of nutty that day. We had a riot. <laughs> a little, little Wu Tang Clan was the opening act, mm -hmm. and um, we had a riot on the lawn. Um, it was over $50,000 worth of uh, damage on the lawn into the fence and back. They set the fence on fire. Uh, they lifted up all the grass and was throwing the grass around like it was a, like a softball. And, uh, and it was really terrible, terrible, really terrible. Um, the good news for me was I had sold the amphitheater to a 
<laughs> public company, so the 50 grand wasn't coming out of my pocket, which was good news for me. Uh, and the next day, I was actually playing golf with the guys who run my company down in New Jersey. So I called them up that night, and I said, oh, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. I said, I, I, I guess I won't be meeting you for golf the next day. They go, oh, no, come on down anyway. <laughs> and I got off the phone, I remember calling my wife and go, holy mackerel, this is unbelievable. If it was my own business, I would have never left there tonight. <laughs> they want me to go down and play in New Jersey tomorrow. Huh. So it was... Uh, it was quite a thing, and I left it to other people to do, uh, to deal with it. But that was our biggest, probably our biggest riot of a few riots we've had there. One of the biggest recurring festivals over the years at the Meadows, Xfinity Theater, and, and all throughout the 25 years for us was OzFest. And you and I always talked about bringing OzFest in each year, and it became kind of a, an annual event, traditional event. Some of the bands that played there, I remember 99 specifically, Black Sabbath and System of a Down. Uh, Godsmack was the opening band on the bigger stage, so that's how small they were at the time. Slipknot was on the second stage, you wow. know, the smaller stage, and that was their debut in Connecticut. But many, many bands came through with Ozfest over the years. What was it about Hartford and that venue that would have Ozfest returning every year? For many years, I was in charge of Ozfest for Live Nation uh, because I was the one chosen to deal with Sharon Osbourne. Um, and, um, and I always liked her, although she'd yell at me as much as she'd yell at anybody else. But I, uh, I always liked her, I always thought she was so smart. And I, know, I knew her back from the 70s when she and I both were in the business. And so my company always put me in charge. So I always made sure Hartford mm -hmm. got a show. My personal favorite show, uh, for many reasons, is the WCCC Big Gig, which you and I did together in 2012, May of 2012, with Godsmack. And uh, Stained and Volbeat and a bunch of different bands. That to me, because I got to work with you, you know, so that was cool. And we put this show on together and um, we often talk about it on social media. You know, we ask our listeners, what are your favorite shows? And that one is another one that is a recurring theme that, that comes up. And there's just so many bands that have played there over the years. It's got to be hard for you to even kind of remember all the different uh, acts that have come through. When somebody mentions it, there must be like a light bulb sometimes, like, oh yeah, that's right. Well, when you mention OzFest, I think of the time, I think it might have been 99, when the audience started to go up on the lawn, started to throw the, the, the patches of grass all yeah. over the place. <laughs> and I'm freaking out, and I run out on stage, which, and I didn't lie, I said, listen, I'm in charge of OzFest for Live Nation. If you're gonna cause me all this damage, I'm, why would I bring, you, bring the show back here? It's right. never coming back. And as soon as they said that, it was like a parent scolding their child. And they weren't children out there. They, they put everything down, everything went, it was great. I walk off the stage feeling very proud of myself, and I walk over to Sharon, I go, no more riot. She goes, how did it stop? And I go, I went out there and I spoke to them. She goes, who told you you could go out there? <laughs> I said, they were tearing down my building. She goes, that's my stage today, not your stage. You shouldn't have been out there. And she started yelling at me. I said, Sharon, I just stopped a riot. Didn't matter her. It was her stage. I had no right to go on the stage. So that's the first thing. When you thought, thought of said Ozfest, I said, oh, my God. That's Sharon Osbourne yelling at me. <laughs> Recurring came to nightmares, mind. right? Yeah, it's 20 years ago, and I remember like yesterday. We could go on and on about the bands, but do you have a bucket list artist that has yet to play there that you hope one day you'll bring them in? Um, no, not really. The Eagles have played there, uh, Springsteen's played there, and that would be my bucket list. I would never expect Paul McCartney to play there. Mm -hmm. um, I would think that he would play uh, either Rentschler or go to Mohegan Sun or the XL Center. Uh, because of the large lawn, he tends not to play amphitheaters because his audience tends to want to sit in seats as they get older. So, but McCartney would be my bucket list, but Mm -hmm. Every time McCartney says he's going to tour, I don't even put offers in for, really? for there. So it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I work on other venues, but not that one. So I, I mean, having the Eagles and Springsteen for me were the two big ones. Mm -hmm. So 25 years of the Meadows Music Theater, and now the Xfinity Theater in Hartford. And I just want to say thank you. And you know, we were talking you know, off camera before about if you've gone to a concert in Connecticut, a major concert, it's been produced by you. You're the one that has brought them in. And we've probably seen it at the Meadows Music Theater and now the Xfinity Theater. And just thank you, because those are all memories for us. Well, I had people like you that helped bring the people in. I mean, it's, it's a family, it's a community of people that work on this. I mean, uh, I, I built it, I helped build it, but you know, I, uh, I'm just one person, this giant succession of, of people that helped bring 
and make the place successful. Wow, you've created a lot of memories and a lot of, you know, these are what people, you know, they live for this. They live for going to these live shows and seeing their favorite bands. I get it. I still go to concerts a lot. I, you know, my taste is older, but I've been, <laughs> I've been to four, four Billy Joel shows this year at the Garden in, in the last year. I've seen Paul Simon, Eric Clapton, um, and I'm Bruce Springsteen live on Broadway three times. I love going to concerts. I get it. That's why I'm in the business. I, it's, it's memorable. Going to a concert is memorable. Well, that's why people love you, because you're still a fan. Oh, yeah. I want my places to be loose and fun. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to be, you know, sit down in your seat, you know, <laughs> throw the flashlight on you and that sort of stuff. That's <laughs> not what a concert's about. Mm -mm. Yeah, I agree. Congratulations. Uh, Mike, thanks, pal. 25 Appreciate years it. of the uh, Meadows Music Theater, now the Xfinity Theater in Hartford, and... Uh, who knows what the future holds? Well, he probably knows what the future holds. <laughs> I don't know. I'm 70. I hope there is a future. That's all I care about it's now. It's going to be a long future. <laughs> We're going to cover it all at iRock Radio, the world headquarters of rock.